You're now listening to Hack and Grow Rich with Shaheen Shayan and his co-host, Bart Baggett, where we discuss hacking your way to success and the unconventional paths to unreasonable success with the people who've been there. And now, the author of Billion, How I Became King of the Thrill Pill Cult, Shaheen Shayan. All right, welcome back to the Kelly Roach Show. So excited to be here with you today, and you are in for an amazing treat. I was able to wrangle in the world's foremost authority on Amazon, and he has quite the story to share, and he's also going to dip in a little bit to what's happening in the world of podcasting. I know a lot of you all are podcasters as well, but also have a big dream of getting a product selling on Amazon, so we're going to dip in and out. I'm super excited to have with me today Shaheen Cheyenne. Shaheen, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. So happy to be on, Kelly. Okay. So I'm happy to have you here. I don't even know where to start because I'm so excited to dig into all of this. But let's let's dial the clock back a little bit and let's talk about how you got into the world of Amazon and how this this journey kind of unfolded with you growing this this presence and, and how you teach people and how you personally sell on Amazon. And then we'll talk a little bit about what's happening with the world of podcasting. So tell yeah, us a little bit totally. about your story. Yeah, totally. So, you know, I actually started in the world of health and wellness supplements back in the early 90s. I was a teenage millionaire. I started this company. We created a billion dollars of revenue uh, pre-internet, which is pretty nuts. Pretty crazy. And uh, from there, uh, I went on to doing a few different entrepreneurial ventures. But at some point, I decided to go back into supplements. And this was back in 2009, 2010 where Amazon was great mainly for books. They weren't allowing this stuff. And there's this little guy named Jeff Bezos and everybody kind of had his eye on him in the VC world. And I I started investing in different companies and I was looking at at Amazon very closely. And we, this was a time where you could get Jeff Bezos on the other end of the phone if you needed to. He wasn't the richest man in the world. In fact, he was kind of struggling. And uh, you could email him. It was jeff at amazon.com. He'd Mm -hmm. respond. He responded to all the emails. And so we heard through the grapevine of kind of being in these circles that Jeff was going to open up the Amazon platform to third-party sellers. What that means is that whereas before they were really only selling books and a few odd items, books and CDs and DVDs, people remember what those were. Um, yeah. that they were going to open it up to anybody to sell anything. And so uh, I had uh, just been at the point where I was like now getting in my 30s. And I was like, man, if there was a way that I could develop a brain supplement. So I developed this brain supplement. And I was like, how can I sell this thing? And of course, the Amazon thing popped. And I was like, you know what? Let me try to sell it on there. You know, there's, there aren't many people on there selling supplements. Let me try So I started a seller account. And back then you could do it all in a day. It was like 15 minutes. You'd have your Amazon store going. You'd be able to sell on Amazon. Uh, And it was a high ticket item. It was this brain pill called Accelerol Focus Plus. It's it's amazing. It's still on the market. And nobody was really selling anything like it. And certainly not on Amazon. I went to sleep. It was like $130 uh, package in those days. Now it's far less. And I woke up to thousands of orders. And I thought to myself, what just happened? Because that's hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank from really doing nothing. And I went back and I started looking more closely at Jeff Bezos and what he had created. And I began to realize that Amazon wasn't just a bookstore. It was never planned to be a bookstore. It was a distribution uh, avenue for anything and everything. He had always planned on becoming the everything store. And for people who don't know, that's why, you know, the A to Amazon, and you know how there's that arrow pointing to the Z? That's because it's A to Z, right? Everything. They're the everything store. And so I decided to go all in on Amazon and learn everything I could. And in a couple short years, I became one of the leading Amazon experts in the country. We managed entire portfolios for Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies. I run a couple uh, eight-figure Amazon companies where we make Amazon products and we private label them and we sell them on the Amazon platform. So that's been a, a very wild and exciting ride. And so fast forward to today. Right. Yeah. So, cause you, I mean, this was, this is how many years in the making now, since you, since you got this first brain supplement up in the Amazon in 15 minutes and you wake up overnight in thousands of words. I mean, this is, this is 
but take us back. Like what, what yeah, year this is are we? Over 10 years ago, right? Okay. So it's like 12, you know, it's, fu- it's funny, Kelly, since COVID, like everything is a blur. Like, I don't I know. know how much, how much time I is know. passed? It's- like, it it all blurs together. Okay. So you did this kind of, you know, by chance testing it out to see what would happen and and would it work, you know, 10 years ago and then, and then, you know, started expanding and then private labeling and, you know, now where do, where, where did this go? What what are you doing today with, with this knowledge that you've accumulated and and how are you using these skills today? Yeah. Great question. So our rates kept going up as the demand went up because we were like, we're making so much money on Amazon. It was like printing money. And so we're like, okay, well, we figured it out. We figured out the algorithm. We know that when people buy on Amazon, they speak a very specific language, right? There's a certain language. You have to be able to speak that language when you're trying to sell anything. And Amazon is no different. So we learned that reviews and ratings are very important. We learned that the way you show the images are very important. We learned that people who are on Amazon often don't have time. They just look at the reviews and they want the three highlights of the product and they're done. So you have to be very succinct. So we distilled this into an algorithm and we started doing this service for Fortune 50s, Fortune 500s. And our rates went up and we were like at $55,000 a month, which is what we charge now for big companies. And a lot of people came to me, a lot of actually young people. And they're like, dude, Shaheen, I want to be you. I want to do what you're doing and make all this Amazon money, but I don't know how. And can I hire you? And I said, yeah, but we're like really expensive if you want us to do it for you. And you don't have that kind of money. You don't have 55000 a month or you know $2,400 an hour to pay me to come on. They're like, yeah, maybe if you had a class. So that's where I came up with uh, FBA Seller Course. It's fbasellercourse.com for anybody that's interested. And I just started mentoring and teaching people with my Amazon FBA Seller Course, the Amazon Mastery Course. And we created this online training where we teach people how do you find a product? How do you make sure that product is profitable? How do you sell it in any market environment? And how do you speak the language of people who are buying on Amazon. And then we teach them how to take that knowledge and branch out to other platforms. Like my wife now is selling on Etsy. She became an Amazon seller when we had our kid. We've got a, he's nine now. But uh, when he was first born, she was like, I don't want to have to do a nine to five. And she's like, well, let me start doing a, uh, a small Amazon business. And she started an Amazon business. She's doing seven figures now with her Amazon business. So the the story is real. And I'll tell you what, in fact, I have a two hour training. It's normally 200 bucks for anybody that's listening to the Kelly road show. Let's give it to them for free. So anybody that wants to reach out to me, um, I'll share my email and we'll share it in the show notes. Uh, it's D a R K Z E S S at gmail.com. Reach out to me, mention the Kelly road show. I'll give you the $200 training free, no credit card, nothing. Cause my goal now is to inspire 2000 people to start Amazon businesses. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it. it. We'll, we'll put all of that information in the show notes so that everybody can, can grab the link and can remember the email. I, I can't remember the email, but it's going to be in the show notes down below. So we'll make sure everybody can get it, but let's unpack this a little bit, right? Because, yeah. you know, Amazon is a, fascinating, fascinating animal. And obviously it's going to, you know, continue to evolve. It's the most frictionless, you know, buying experience. You can imagine it's great for people that are busy, which is why it's just going to keep, you know, growing and growing. Um, I want to go back again to the companies that actually hire you, right? So they're Mm. spending 55,000 a month to have you do this done for you, uh, work for them. Um, and, and what types of products are these companies uh, selling on Amazon? And talk to me a little bit about what their advertising budget looks like. Like when we're looking at the scope of, you know, that opportunity. And then I want to distill it back and talk a little bit about the individual that's just getting started that's going to do the, the FBA seller course. Yeah, totally. So, okay, these are great questions. So the first question is about what kind of companies are hiring us. Mm-hmm. And those are usually companies where our fee of 55000 a month is a line item for them. It's a rounding mm-hmm. error. It is not yeah. anything of significance. Yeah. Not only that, unlike social media advertising, influencer marketing, running ads, doing all that stuff where you do it and you drop half a million bucks a week in some cases mm-hmm. and see nothing mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. Our service gives them a return right away. So there's Mm -hmm. immediate ROI, return on investment, uh, when they hire us. And for one product, there are so many products on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I show people this every day. They're doing millions of dollars a month per product. Yeah. So 
the fee to hire a professional to do it for you in these cases of health and wellness, beauty is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, electronics is another big one. Um, you know, we, we tend to have our focus in health and wellness, beauty, cosmetics. Um, we've, we've got a baby products company that we're uh, helping out right now. Uh, we've got a, a consumer products goods company, uh, you know, uh, and, and these companies can afford to pay us. But not only that, they see orders of magnitude increase in their ROI just from hiring us. So it Absolutely. makes sense. No, I totally get it. I, I, we, I've always been a huge believer in advertising and investing in, in optimization. So I, I totally see it. And I, that's why I asked the question is I, I get the value in it. And I guess a follow-up question that I would have to that is, you know, of the millions upon millions upon millions of products that are on Amazon and sellers on Amazon, what percentage do you think are actually optimizing what they're doing effectively, because I think, I think it can be confusing for people. I think they think, oh, you know, Amazon, you know, I'll never, I'll never be discovered on Amazon or I can never sell a lot of my product because there's so much competition. However, and I don't know, I'm, I'm incompetent. That's why I'm asking you. Um, but I have to venture to guess it's only a very small percentage of products that are properly optimized and really using the language and the optimization and the advertising and the reviews in the most effective way. So how much does that actually reduce your competition, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Yeah, you hit it on the nose, Kelly. The answer to that is very few. And one of the things that we teach our students in uh, FBA seller course is that you can't really compete anymore on price. You can't really compete anymore on product. There's so many. And I'll give you an example. I had a, a student who found this one power supply, this replacement laptop power supply that he wanted to sell. Now, when you go online to search for this power supply, there's 50 of them. And they range from $9.97 all the way up to $79. What's the difference between all of these? Nothing. Some of these are doing about seventy-five to eighty thousand dollars a month, and some of them are doing a few hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So we take a look at the listings more closely, and what we learn, and and this is one of the things that I teach, is that story is more important than product, and that's what Amazon's done. So the story that the guy that's making eighty-five thousand dollars a month is telling is he's got a close-up of this power supply. And he points to a little USB slot where you can plug in your phone in the back of your power brick. Guess what, Kelly? They all have that feature. Just this one guy shows it at part of the story in his pictures. It's a, it's a, a, a $5 Photoshop job to show that and highlight that. But he's learned to tell that story. And just that one little tweak to that Amazon listing is making him $75,000 a month, more than all the other people that are selling the exact same product, even for half or 75% less than he is. So what we learn is in a competitive marketplace, what you have to do is you have to study your competition. You have to find their weakness, and then you have to exploit that weakness. That's the algorithm that you have to do. And there's a very specific way to do it. Again, anybody that wants to reach out to me and I'll send you the course for free. We teach you how to do that. Super smart. Well, I, I love to hear that it's you can no longer compete on price because I think it's the laziest way to market and not then and I think it's the most inefficient and and it, it's like a race to the bottom right so I think it's fantastic that it's like hey we've already gotten to the point where things are as about as, as cheap as they're gonna get and now yeah. we're really competing on a different playing field that's a great thing and I think for people that have always wanted to get a product off the ground without having to build the massive infrastructure of direct to consumer that maybe we're hesitant to building on Amazon, you know, that that really opens up a, a important angle for people to understand that their success or failure is not going to be based on price. It's really going to be based on understanding these other components, right? Yeah, totally. You never want to be raced at bottom. That's not exciting. And this is why I encourage people like, don't go sell the same thing that everybody else is selling. 
right? Yeah. You have to find a competitive advantage and you don't want to be that guy who your only advantage is you're 20 cents less than the last guy. Yeah. It's true because yeah. you'll lose that advantage really, really quickly, right? Now, right. what are you seeing in the book space, right? Because obviously Amazon started with books and then obviously exploded out into the A to Z, right? And are you supporting people that are really focusing on, on scaling up their book sales? And, and what kind of scale are you seeing right now with the people that are optimizing correctly with, with books? And I ask that specifically because obviously we have a lot of people listening to the show right now that are authors, that are entrepreneurs, that have either written books or are writing books and would love to find a way to scale those book sales with Amazon. Oh, I got something really good for you on that one. So, okay, there was a time where we were getting lots of authors. Authors, unfortunately, uh, are the bottom of the totem pole, even for the publisher. So if you're an author, understand your publisher is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. You need to get out there and promote your book. Thousand percent. And mo more importantly than that, I would hope that every single author out there has a back end to making money. If you're a speaker, if you're selling a software, a service, yeah. coaching, consulting, whatever it is, because you have to now, you have to, you would be amazed yeah. at how many New York times best-selling authors are coming to, to us. So a couple of years ago, I launched my book billion, how I became king of the thrill pill cult. It became a immediate bestseller. We just got a film deal for it, which I'm really excited about, uh, That's that nice. they announced that. Yeah. Big Hollywood studio Academy award-winning Hollywood studio is going to be producing the Amazing. film. Congratulations. I, thank you. Yeah. And I did it all through podcasts just like this one. So I started doing these podcasts and I started, and I'm, I'm going to uh, lead into your question here. I started doing all these shows and I was like, man, this is good, but it's kind of moving slow. What's going on? I realized that I was the dude on the corner in the nice neighborhood selling my own house, right? Because mm -hmm. I was representing myself. And, you know, I had my 15 minutes of fame. So a lot of the show hosts recognized me and they were like, okay, cool. We'll have you on. But I was like, how can I 10 X this effort? Yeah. So what I did is I started a, a small podcasting company. I hired a couple people to get on there and start pitching me publicists. And we started building out the algorithm. And the thing I learned is that the second that somebody else was representing me and it was on a company letterhead went up 10 times. Mm -hmm. And so we spent a good part of the last two years building out how do you communicate with show hosts, right? Mm -hmm. And why is this important? It's important because the highest ROI of any marketing effort that you will ever do uh, is going to be podcasts. Why? Podcasts are evergreen. They live forever on the internet. Most yeah. of them are long form. We yeah. get to know you when you're doing a podcast. When when you're on this podcast with me, we're buds, we're friends, right? Yeah. We're You and me right now are at the gym with somebody who's doing their, their leg lifts while they're listening to us, yeah. right? Absolutely. They're in the car driving, waiting to pick up the kids from soccer while they're listening to us. And so it's a way of selling through authority. More importantly, you, Kelly, are interviewing me. So you are the authority in your space. You're asking me questions. I can go out there and tell everybody, hey guys, I'm the best at Amazon. I'm the best at podcasting. I'm the best at this, that, and the other thing. People be like, cool, man, but you got a vested interest because you're trying to sell me something. But if you are interviewing me and you're like, Shaheen's the greatest at this, that, and the other, not that you are, but... um. If you're doing it, now I have authority because somebody sure. else who's in authority is giving me theirs. So podcasting is one of the most influential ways. The second yeah. thing is it, it's very inexpensive to do compared to uh, you know the ROI on social advertising, on Facebook advertising, on LinkedIn sure. advertising, on any kind of these things. And you get to build a body of work that you can then meme, that you can aggregate and put out all over the internet to become the authority in your space. So for okay. anybody that, that's interested, I do a free 15 minute consult. The company is called Podcast Cola. Look us up, podcastcola.com. You can go on there and book a time and be on great shows like this, like Kelly's show. Plus the other amazing advantage that a lot of authors had. So this is the ultimate hack is they get to network with great podcast hosts like yourself. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people have made deals with our show hosts, the tens of thousands of shows that we book. They're like, man, yeah. I got on a show with this host, but she's also a real estate broker in, in Cabo San Lucas. And she just you know, bought me and my family our first investment yeah. property out there. I'm like, yeah. amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. I, I couldn't agree more. I I feel like podcasting is the best investment you can possibly make of time and energy as it relates to building your brand, like bar none. And it's really interesting because I think that so many business owners will kill themselves creating content. They'll kill themselves doing all sorts of other things in their business, but it's podcasting that actually gets you the exposure. Right. It's podcasting that actually gets you in front of new audiences, which is actually what makes that content matter because you can create content for five people all day and all night. It's going to be the exposure to new brands that's going to really make the difference. So, yeah, totally. That's absolutely right. And, you know, we've seen so I credit Joe Rogan with bringing it back. Right. Because you remember there was a time where podcasts were everything and everybody was like, oh, my God, podcast is the next big thing. Yeah. Then it all disappeared. It all went away. And then all of a sudden there's this guy who's like this like reality TV host, uh, you know, slash fight commentator. And he's just pounding away, just doing these show after show, thousands of shows. And then all of a sudden he has a larger audience than CNN and Fox News combined. Yeah, yeah, combined. No, absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. It's it's mind blowing watching what is happening and what you can do with the audience that you can build with podcasting. I couldn't agree more. So let's kind of bring it full circle for people. Let's yeah. start on the let's start on the Amazon side for a second. Obviously, you shared some great free resources and you shared a course that you have that people can get started with if they're interested. Yeah. But Let's just say that someone is sitting here today and we want to give them a couple quick and dirty tips. They have a product on Amazon right now. They want to look at what can they do right here, right now, that is going to impact the effectiveness of their listing and and the traffic that they're getting. What would you tell them to go out and do today? Sure. So it's a process. So the first thing you need to do, I would recommend, is finding the top 10 winners in your space. Who's mm-hmm. making the money? And there's tools. There's a tool called Helium 10. Again, we recommend it in the free course. So just get the free mm-hmm. course. There's one called Helium 10, which is probably the best one. There's another one called mm-hmm. Jungle Scout that a lot of people use. And these tools will allow you to spy the sales of your competitors online on Amazon. Mm-hmm. So you need to find out who your top 10 competitors are. And then you need to look at their listings and find their vulnerabilities. Mm-hmm. Is there a USB port they're not mentioning? Is there cup, their sippy cup, is it BPA free? And they're not mentioning it. And most moms are looking for BPA free cups for their kids. Mm -hmm. Is there a a certain color that they don't offer that you could offer? And then you want to optimize your listing. The main problem people have is that they don't know, they don't have a product. So they're like, man, I think I'm just going to wait till a product comes to me. And the truth is, it doesn't work that way. The way that it works is you can't base your business on a product. You have to base your business on a business system. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't matter what product it is. And I I always ask people, I'm like, hey, do you care if you're selling kids diapers or sneakers or barbecue mitts? If you're making $100,000 a month per product, a million dollars a month, does it matter to you what you're selling? Everybody says, no, it doesn't matter. Say, okay. So you have to find a system, not a product. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the the best way to do that is to find somebody who's done it and get them to coach you and to mentor you. And that's, that's effectively what we do. But if you don't come to us, find somebody who's done it and have them teach you the way it's the best. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So what are you most excited about looking forward into 2023 and where do you plan on taking your companies from here? So obviously you have the podcasting side, you have the Amazon side, you have some TV stuff coming up. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a lot of super exciting stuff coming coming out right now. But honestly, the you know, the two areas that I'm most excited about is one is Amazon and being able to get 2000 people to create predictable recurring revenue streams and yeah. not have to work the 9 to 5. I think, you know, in the yeah. old days, like for me, I had my first big hit when I was in my teens, right? We did a billion dollars in revenue with my first supplement company. I was like, "Man, this is it." But then subsequently, I had lots of other companies that did really well. And Mm -hmm. I think the way moving forward is we all need to have two, three, four, five streams of revenue, some of which are are passive, some of which are semi-passive, some of which are recurring revenue models uh, in order to really be successful. It's not going to be one big thing for everybody anymore. 
Yeah. So with that said, I think you have to be able to focus on different areas of yeah. business. And Amazon is a spectacular area, but also yeah. you want to get your message out. And in whatever yeah. business you're in, you want to be an authority. And that's where being a featured guest on podcasts come in. So I'm I'm super excited about that. Anyone that's interested, again, podcastcola.com. I'd love to talk to you and hear your story and see if you'd be right for being on great podcasts like Kelly's. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. It was great having you here. I love what you're doing. Uh, two really relevant areas for entrepreneurs to dig into. So thanks for everything that you shared here today. Yeah. Honored to be on Kelly. Great energy today. All right. Thank you for having and me. where do you want to invite people to connect with you if they want to learn more and talk to you? I know we gave them the courses they can, you know, yeah. tap into, but where are you online? You want to share your online handles so that people can. Connect? Yeah. So, uh, on Twitter, uh, and most channels I'm at Shaheen Shan or at hack and grow rich. Uh, you can also get me on my website, shaheenshan.com. But really, if you want to book a time to talk to me, go to podcastcola.com and book a 15-minute uh, call uh, or go to fbasellercourse.com and book a call, FBA for Fulfillment by Amazon. I'd love to talk to you, love to hear your story and to see if there's a way we can create some recurring revenue streams for you. That sounds great. All right. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you back here soon.